Today we're going to take a closer look at the turbo train. A couple of the categories that we're going to look into are going to be posted down below and also it's going to have timestamps so that way if you guys just want you can if there's a particular category you want to look into or you're more interested in you can go ahead just see the timestamp fast forward to that area and take a look at what you want to see. And today's categories are what's in the box, getting it on track, getting a closer look, functions, performance, and with all that said, let's get it started. Let's get this party started. The nine car set comes with two boxes. One box has the power units, and the other one is just the coaches. Let's see which one we're gonna open up first, and it's gonna be the one with the power units. Okay, let's put this one off to the side. First impressions, absolutely spectacular. All right, so this one here, I'll throw this up like this so you guys can see. This has the sticker on it, sound equipped. Very nice. All right, so we open it up. The first thing that pops up is the manual. So I did read the manual, lots of details in here. I'll give an example here, turbo DCC function quick reference, putting a train on the track, breaking it in, how to set up the, the cars, which configuration they go in, train length arrangement. Yeah, so lots of stuff. So this side is English, this side is French. Some stuff for if you want magazines. This one over here. If your turbo train has sound, please note, and mine does have sound. Not bad. And then an exploded parts diagram. This one here is all for the coaches. This one here is for the power unit. As you can see, this is for one of the power units. This is for the other one. Nice protective foam. We take that off and then BAM! We get everything here. <laughs> All right, so we have the two power units and we have three passenger cars. Uh, these things over here is actually the trucks or the truck, I should say. <laughs> it's a single axle. This is where the, the units get plugged into each other. Very nice. Let me put that one back. Extra parts. Let's see what's over here. Oh, we got some extra drive wheels with the rubber tires. Now, mind you, this does have rubber tires. Um, now, for the locomotive itself, it only has one set of wheels to actually drive the, the, the engine, as you can see over here. All right, so this is really the only way that the train's going to be able to get some, any kind of traction to be able to pull itself. So, unfortunately, yeah, it's going to have to use the traction tires. And, and to see, it's, it's surrounded in soft plastic. All right, the other goodie bag is actually the little hose line that go underneath the car itself. Uh, for an example, right down here. All right, so this is encased in soft plastic. Make sure that none of the paints get scratched or rubbed off, which is real nice. Okay. So. All right, for the second one, same thing. Put this one off to the side. Let's see the, the barcode over here so you guys know what the product number is. Now, this one is just the passenger cars. So we go ahead and open this up. Again, some extra parts right there. Some literature, exploded diagram for the passenger cars. Soft foam. And then same thing, all in soft plastic, which is real nice to keep it from scratching. Uh, we have four cars and then plus the the pieces that connect them, the middle pieces. I am sorry, I'm not too sure what the name of this is. If you guys know what the name of uh, what this actually is, can you leave a comment down below? That would be very helpful. Okay, so I brought you guys to the Rapido website. Over here, I wanted to show you guys the different paint schemes that the turbo comes in. All right, so here we go as we scroll down a little bit, and here are the different paint schemes. We have United Aircraft, Penn Central, Early Amtrak, Late Amtrak, Canadian National, 
via Rail Canada. Yes, so there are six paint schemes to choose from and all very nice. My favorite was Canadian National. That's why I got it. All right, so I'm going to show you guys on how I set up the turbo train on my ECOS. All right, so one of the really cool things about ESU is that the ECOS has Railcom. And as well with Rapido using ESU lock sound decoders, they are Railcom equipped. So all I just needed to do was put the train on the track, press power. The ECOS 2 detected the turbo train and it just basically uploaded. All I just did was I changed the address. So everything over here that you see on the functions, that uploaded as well. I programmed the address according to the road numbers. So the front unit was 125, that's on address 125, and the rear unit or is 150, and I programmed it to address 150. I went ahead and I did a universal consist. Now guys, if you wanna learn more about how to create a consist, you can go ahead, look at the link in the comments down below. As well, I will put a link to at the end of this video on how to create a consist. All right, so I'm gonna show you guys, I took pictures of the front and rear, so that's how I put it. Uh, then when we go down to the CN Turbo Train or Turbo Consist, um, I actually put the power units together, took a picture of that, and that is now my icon. Now, guys, if you do have an ECOS, uh, you can actually go ahead to the website and look for the icon. I actually uploaded all of these images of the Turbo Train on the ESU website. Putting together this train is actually very easy. Now, as I showed you guys, these are the metal pieces to achieve the trains connecting together, it's basically just snapping in these in between. Uh, one side you'll have two connectors, as you can see over here, the other side is one connector, but the really cool part is if you look underneath, it actually shows you which way it's supposed to be going. So because that's the front, it's gonna be going to the right. All you just need to do, put the axle or the wheels on the track, move it forward, lift it, and just gently push. Don't force it in there because uh, you have little pieces under here, like as you can see, that can snap. Uh, same thing with this. If it doesn't want to go, then don't force it. There it goes. So now I'm going to connect all the rest of the cars together. Uh, as I said, you just be super careful as you're putting this on because there's uh, highly detailed parts underneath that are very fragile and the last thing you want to do is break it. All right, that is the whole train looking fantastic. Holy Mac, looks really good. <laughs> Let's take a really close look and see the details.
this train does have interior lighting. Now it's throughout the entire train. The engines plus the, the coach cars. Now they are not done by decoders, but it's actually powers grabbed from the pickups on the trucks. Now I know during the day you can't really see it, uh, especially when the windows there are tinted. But if we actually turn off the lights, you can see right there that it's on. And you know what's really cool? It looks very prototypical. And that's another thing that Rapido has done. It's to make almost every little aspect of this train prototypical. Not only for the looks, operations, but definitely for the interior lighting. I am just putting the train in here to see if it actually fits into my station and it doesn't. <laughs> it's a one car short. So what I'm gonna end up doing is I'm gonna break down the train just to the first five car set and that is gonna fit perfectly inside the station. And that's how the five car set looks on in my passenger station. Before we start the function test, uh, just to let you guys know that there are two sound decoders and some of the sounds are divided up, uh, divided up in between the two. So there's one sound decoder in the lead motor car and then there's another sound decoder in the rear motor car. So starting the functions uh, with the headlights, F0. So what's, what's nice about this, it's actually dimming lights. And then for the rear, it's actually just a um, gyro red light. Function one is the bell. Function two is the horn. Function three is the gyro light. Function four is the speed curve. Function five is the grade crossing. Function six is a, an announcement. Function seven is dimming of the headlights and at the same time it turns off the gyro light. That's good for when you're pulling into the passenger station, you don't have to uh, blind everybody. Function eight is the startup sequence. And then we're going to toggle off the shutdown sequence. Function 9 is an announcement for opening the doors. Please stand clear of the door steps until the door is open. Function 10 is an announcement for doors closing. Ladies and gentlemen, the doors are closing. Please stand clear of the door steps. Madame de Monsieur, L1A Vue de la Porte, the seat will play. The next announcement is actually going to come from the rear motor car. And this one actually is supposed to be for uh, Via. The next announcement, again, it's coming from the rear engine car, and this one is uh, for CN. Function 13 uh, turns off the headlights, but this one actually leaves the gyro light going. 
F-14 is another announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, Gilwood is the next station. Gilwood, la prochaine gare. Gilwood. F-15 is another announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, Kingston is next. Kingston, la prochaine gare. Kingston. F-16 and F-17, they're both in French, but I disabled those. Then F-18 is dimming lights again. F-19 is another announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll be arriving at Toronto Union Station, our final destination, in approximately five minutes. All passengers are requested to remain seated until the turbo stops at the platform. Thank you for traveling up here rail Canada, and we wish you a pleasant day. And then for F-20, which was not in the manual, F-20 is for brake squeal, turning it off and on. If you take a look on the top right part of your screen, you're going to be seeing that I'm using TouchCab, which is uh, an iOS program for Apple and for Apple devices. This is how I use to control my trains when I want to walk around. All right, so let's get to it. Let's uh, turn on the train, start the engines. Engines are warmed up, let's pretend. <laughs> and let's go ahead and start it off speed step one. A little bit of a hard start, but it's not that bad. Alright, let's go backwards. Uh, that was a hard takeoff as well. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it, but there's a little bit of jerking going on. So there was again, there was a little bit of jerking as when it was going forward. It's not that much, but still, it's it, it's there. All right, the next test is zero to top speed. Let's see how long it takes. Now, mind you, this actually has factory pre-programmed momentum in it which is pretty nice so it takes a bit to speed up and it takes a lot more to for it to slow down all right here we go All right, so it looked like it took about one and a half train lengths. Now, mind you, this is five cars on here. So about eight car lengths to get to top speed. Now, what we're gonna do next is gonna be braking. I'm gonna run the train full speed, and then right about here, where the traffic signal is, that's where I'm gonna kill the throttle. All right.
Okay, as you can see there, that took quite a bit of stopping distance. I'm guessing maybe about four to five train lengths. That's actually quite a bit. But again Final thoughts about this train is that it's absolutely beautiful. The sounds are amazing. Using the lock sound decoders and even with the iPhone speakers was a great choice. Now, for detailing, there's a lot, a lot of detailing. For accuracy, you know, I, I'm not a professional on uh, on trains and I'm not gonna even get close to even saying that I am. I'm, I'm totally the opposite. I just enjoy looking at the trains. And, but for detailing wise, looks fantastic. Prototypically, I'm gonna probably say yes, but I'm not too sure. Listen, Jason at Rapido's trains, this is his train. This is like, his, this is his obsession, this turbo train. So when it comes to detailing, I am gonna give 100% trust that the detailing on this train is accurate. Now, for what I don't like, there's only one main thing that I don't like about this train and it's gonna cause an issue in the future and that's for maintenance. It is the trucks, the drive trucks on the power cars. Now on most trains, okay, this is gonna be a uh, uh, Kato, it's gonna be Atlas, it's gonna be even Bachman, and let's bring up the, you know, let's bring it up a little bit more, uh, Fox Valley. I have my Fox Valley Jivo right here. When you pull the trucks out, okay, look, this one right here, you have the gear casing, the gears, everything's inside, everything comes out together. All right, here's a Kato. Let's pull the trucks off. There you go. So you have the gear casing, you have the drive shaft, all right? And then you have the trucks. Now, now as you can see, everything is in one piece. It is one piece and it's very actually quite easy to put back together. Tell you the truth, the Fox Valley is a lot easier to put back together than the Kato. So now, I'm not gonna pull out the gear truck out of the turbo train, and this is the reason why. One, when you pull it out, the casing for the gears is actually stays inside the chassis. So now you have the, now you have the opportunity of losing the worm gear and even the drive shaft. Okay, so now think of it. As I said, it looks very similar to this. Now the only difference is is that there's a T, a piece that goes across here. Now, the reason for that is because that T piece actually sits on the edges of the chassis. And then after there's the other piece that on top that clips and it pushes down on top of it just to secure it. Okay, so now when you're trying to putting it back in, the drive shaft is so far inside that you can barely see it. And you, you can't really, you, and there's a huge a lot of void space inside. So as you're trying to put it in, you know, the the drive shaft goes there, goes there, you can't get it in. And then even if you do get it in, to try to push the trucks back up into the gear casing, you have to put a lot of force, a lot of pressure, just to clip it in there. And even then, like, it was troubling me to do it. As I said, that's a big no-no, man. Like, this is a train that I wanna keep for a very long time, and obviously I'm gonna run it because I like it. I'm gonna have to do maintenance at one point. This does not make things easy. In fact, it does the opposite. And with Rapido, they don't mass produce trains. So this is like a limited run. So what's gonna happen 20 years from now, or even let's say seven years from now, 10 years from now. And I need parts because I was trying, you know, I was trying to do some kind of maintenance. Are the parts still gonna be around? I don't know. This is something that should have been designed a lot better, in my personal opinion. Look, Cotto, Fox Valley, all right? And you know what? Even Bachman, this is my, my F unit. Even Bachman is the same, same style. It's the same style as the Fox Valley. Look, Bachman, Fox Valley, Cotto. I don't know. These are proven, you know, these are proven to work and it's reliable. Uh, like I said, I don't understand why Rapido would go this direction. It just makes things a lot more difficult for an enthusiast to try to maintain and take care of his trains. You know? Anyway, so that's the only thing that I don't like about the train. Now for marks, what I'm gonna give it out of 10. Okay, so instead of 10, I'm gonna drop it down to a nine and that's because of the price. Price was actually quite expensive, 
but again with the highly detailed and the two lock sound decoders in it you know that's understandable so but i'm gonna drop it down to a nine like i said it's really expensive now with the trucks oh my gosh this train i really like it i want to say an eight but i honestly think i'm going to bring it down to a seven and that's really because i'm looking into the future what i have to do for maintenance it's not very user friendly in that sense so yeah i'm gonna have to say a seven out of ten and that, that's uh, i'm really sad to say that i really am i really like the train overall the train looks beautiful guys that is it for this review everyone i hope everyone found it informidable hope everyone enjoyed it and until next time keep on modeling